Great to see everybody. Um, how many people is, are newbies, like would say it's their first time to internet marketing? Okay, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. <laughs> this is a copy of my book. It's called 10 Free Strategies for Internet Marketing. We'll see how far this is going to go. <laughs> Everybody's a newbie now. How funny how that goes, right? <laughs> we got a few more of those. We'll use them as we go along. Um, my name is Jay Berkowitz, and um, I've been doing this Ah, I'm a, I got a 10-timer badge at Affiliate Summit, so I've done at least 10 of these presentations at Affiliate Summit. And I speak at many conferences um, all around the world. I have a company called 10 Golden Rules, and we help people do this stuff. Um, and my, present, my, my business started at a presentation I gave um, 10 years ago called the 10 Golden Rules of Online Marketing. And after the presentation, a bunch of people came up to me and said, that was really good, can we hire you as a consultant? And so I said, okay, buy me lunch, I consult. <laughs> and my business started with a few of those lunches and I left the dot com I was working at and I started the business called 10 Golden Rules. So what we'll do in this presentation is we'll show you some of the newest strategies we're using to drive traffic and conversions for our clients um, and we'll show you just some of the things we're doing for ourselves at the 10 Golden Rules company and um, just different strategies. Um, hopefully everybody has a copy of the slides. If, I'm a note taker, so um, I love to you know, write little things down, and I'll be mentioning a bunch of websites and stuff you can refer to. So if you don't have a copy of these, Betty, do you still have some at the back? Okay, or I have some up here as well. Um, I started my career, I was very lucky. I worked on Coca-Cola, um, brand Coca-Cola, and it was awesome. I got to learn some of the oldest marketing strategies in the world. This is a brand that has been marketed over a hundred years. I was a director of marketing and I worked, uh, you know, moved my way into to telecom. Um, I also worked with uh, McDonald's restaurants. I sold some of the most delicious and high fat food in the world. And then I went to work at eDiets.com. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was actually good. It was about worth about 10 pounds for me. I, I think I need to find out if eDiets is still around. But that was 12 years ago and as I mentioned, I wrote the 10 golden rules of online marketing, I was asked to speak at the Direct Marketing Association and, and our business started 12 years ago after that presentation. The book um, that Malika, Madalika got is, uh, this book got to number one on Amazon last year in two categories, uh, small business and entrepreneurship. And um, so I've been doing this for quite a while and hopefully um, this session will be valuable. My goal is to teach you these 10 strategies and um, Hopefully, I'll, I'll make it relatively easy, so um, I, I, I use the easy button. So one of the things that I've been blessed with is, trying to, is, is the ability to make this complex stuff relatively simple and relatively easy to understand. And um, as well, if, if you're more of I'm an advanced marketer, um, I've got the genius tips, the Einstein tips, um, on some of the real cutting edge things we're doing. Uh, but, but really, my goal is to, to two things. One is you know, wherever you're at, I want to take you to the next level in your digital marketing. And the second thing is, um, I, I, we're going to do a couple exercises. Is that okay with everyone? We do a couple exercises? Anyone not want to do any work? Anyone just want to sit there? <laughs> uh, once again, how many people are newbies? Newbies? And how many people are like halfway intermediate? How many super mega rock star veterans? Hands up. Where's John Chow? <laughs> All right, just we got one uh, super mega veteran. Um, and anyone else? Anyone else? Any other categories? Okay, good. Thank you very much. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the 10 uh, new strategies that can really drive success for you in the digital uh, market. And the first place we're going to start out is with um, your own digital superpower. And, you know, we're, we're all very, very passionate about something. So I want you to think for a minute, you know, regardless of if you're here for a company or if you're here, you know, you already have a company, you know, where does your passion lie? Where are you most happy? Which blogs do you read? Which, which websites or Facebook pages do you like to hang out on, given your choice? You know, not maybe what you do in, in your core day job, okay? Does everyone have an idea of, of sort of where their passion lies? Now this, does, do you think... 
What's this woman into, maybe? <laughs> Knitting, anyone? <laughs> How about this guy? You think he likes cameras? So that's what we're looking for, is something that you're like super passionate about. I mean, you think this guy makes him bottles his own wine or collects wine or something? So I want you to think for a minute about what, you know, where is your passion? Because there's a really incredible thing. And I was lucky enough to get assigned a, a mentee in the mentor-mentee program. And Eric and I had dinner last night, and we were talking a little bit about this. And, and, and there's a thing we call the 95% rule. And this is an amazing opportunity for us, because in, in your area of passion, the thing that you study, read, watch, you know, listen to podcasts, watch, you know, go to Facebook pages, the thing you're passionate about, you know more about that than 95% of the rest of the world. And this is really important because so many of us think that to do this digital marketing stuff, we have to be the guru's guru. We have to be the best in the world. And that's not the case. And I'm going to show you some simple exercises how we can get started, you know, really today with some digital marketing products. Okay? So I want you to think about, you know, what is it that is your 95% rule that you know more about than 95% of the rest of the world? Because you can create product in that area. And if you're passionate, if you've got the, like that Steve Jobs passion for something, something you love, okay, that can become your own personal digital superpower. So what I want you to do is I want you to um, find a partner, okay? So can everyone just pair up with the person beside them? Just for convenience, if you've got three together, um, work in threes. And I just want you to take one minute each, and I want you to explain to the other person what your digital superpower is, and, 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 you know, this is not like anything secret or anything like that. This is, um, you know, something, just things you love. And you can pick more than one. And here on the slide, I want you to make a couple notes, because we're going to work with this, of two or three things that you're really passionate about, things that you do in your own time, books you read, blogs you study. You're going to have one minute each. I want you to start and work with your partner. Okay, for one minute, go. All right, can you work with these guys? Sure. Okay, thanks. You can just oh, you, you can just turn around here. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. What's your name? Tanya. Tanya, Jay. And this is George. George, Tanya. Vivian. Vivian. Okay. So you guys want to spend about 2 minutes and just talk about your superpower. So Tanya, what are you what, what are you super passionate about? Just a hobby you have. Shopping. <laughs> That's a good one. That's an awesome one, right? Yeah. I help my friends shop. That's a great one. Okay, so write down shopping and fashion. And what do you guys, um, do, you, do you have something you're really passionate about? Now, it could be what you do at work. I just, I love running businesses. You love running businesses? Yeah, Okay. <laughs> and what's, what's one of your... Yoga. That's awesome, okay? So w do a little bit of brainstorming and talk a little bit about other things, maybe, you know, branches of that. And we'll, we'll wrap up. Okay, you guys should probably switch now. Switch to the other person and talk about their superpower. Spend about one minute. Hey, I had to, I had to meet my rock star. <laughs> How you doing? Jay. Yeah, nice to see you. How you doing? Jay, Adam. So you guys doing the exercises or you're already like you're already there? <laughs> What's your superpower? Your personal digital superpower. Like if you could create a new blog on just something you love, you know, real passion. Hmm? Cooking? Quilting. Awesome. I could put you in the example. In the knitting example. <laughs> Do you have a superpower? And that, those are great. I mean, because like you see people like their eyes just light up when they talk about something you're passionate about. So, you know, if you're blogged in that area or Facebooked or Instagrammed or Pinterested, <laughs> we'll talk about how you do all that stuff. No, come on up. What's your name? Patty. Patty? Yes. What's your uh, superpower? Yeah, Jen's here. Thanks, honey. I just walked in. That's okay. But I walked in. You guys got the notes? Did you get the... Uh
Okay, about 30 seconds. We're going to wrap up in 30 seconds. I have a di digital marketing agency called 10 Golden Rules, and we help people do all this stuff. <laughs> Facebook and Google. And okay, stop. <laughs> That didn't work too well. Everybody, stop. <laughs> Thank you very much. OK, we're we'll spend a lot more time on this stuff. But everybody, does, does everybody have one, one idea of something that they're passionate about that they could maybe blog about or Facebook about? Would, would anyone be willing to share? What, what's your digital superpower? Someone over here? Someone over there? Thank you. What's your name? Jerry. Jerry, thanks for sharing. And wh what's something you're passionate about that you could help other people with that you know more about than 95% of everybody else? How not to shoot crappy photographs. That's awesome. Thank you very much for sharing. Quick hand for Jerry, please. Thank you. Jerry, did you get a book? No. Oh, wow. That's, well, that's worth a book. <laughs> Thank you. Someone else? What's a digital superpower? What's your name? Uh, Helen. Helen, thanks for sharing. Uh, organizing. Organizing? Yes. Awesome. And you do this for fun. And did you read about it, blog about it? All right. Can you guys pass that back to Helen? Thank you very much for sharing. Quick round of applause for Helen. OK, so we got not, how not to shoot crappy photographs. And we got organizing. I got shopping in the back, and I got cooking. OK, and we're going to work with some of these as some of the examples. All right. Um, next up, I just want to tell you about something that's super hot. Um, Austin's going to try and scope this. <laughs> and. Um, just give me two seconds because we're gonna we're gonna actually go live um, on this new new product and service. So um, I guess we first started hearing about Meerkat and Periscope um, around the time of South by Southwest, which is another big show um, like this in um, Austin, Texas. We're scoping now. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about Periscope now, and I'm going live on the internet with this new product called Periscope, and Periscope is. Um, basically live video streaming. So we're live on the internet. How many people are watching? Three, Three people are watching. <laughs> Four. <laughs> so uh, at Jay Berkowitz. So just like my Twitter name. And Twitter acquired Periscope. And um, my uh, projection is that this is going to be very significant. It's going to be a very significant social media. And it might be the sort of the savior of Twitter, or it'll really boost up the Twitter stop. As people start periscoping, and we're going to see live periscoping from news events and things happening around the world. Now, this girl, Amanda Oleander, we actually tweeted her and told her we were going to be periscoping, so hopefully Amanda's watching this, um, has become the first sort of periscope rock star. She'd ha she's had over 30 million hearts. Uh, the hearts are the little, um, the little icons. When people like what you're saying or like what you're doing, they just send you a heart. They send you a little love. So she's already had over 30 million hearts. And um, you know, regularly, she'll max out her Periscope feed. She'll have over 1,000 people watching her on Periscope. And she's just talking about, you know, she's a young designer living in LA, and she's just talking about her life and just live streaming her life. Um, so she's sort of become a, a breakout superstar. I did my first scope a couple weeks ago at a conference, and 15 or 20 people hopped on, people, some people I knew, people in my Twitter stream, and they uh, just started a conversation with me. So when you get to the level of an Amanda Oleander, or even if you're in, you know, in a business of some, some area and you want to talk about shopping or cooking or organizing, and you build a base of you know, 100, 200, 300 people who come and listen to your tips about organizing or shopping, um, you can very quickly start to monetize that traffic. And we'll talk about different ways you can monetize as we go throughout this presentation. But you know, think of Periscope as you know, Facebook seven or eight years ago, or uh, Twitter six or seven years ago, or Instagram two or three years ago, where it, it could be the hot new thing. And the amazing opportunity is that this young girl, 24-year-old girl, who you know, is not uh, particularly remarkable for anything else, has all of a sudden become you know, famous, and she's written up in, in articles and, and, and being talked about. So this is so new that there's an amazing opportunity to take advantage of it. So whatever your area of passion is, you could just go on there and teach people things in your area of passion 
and you get a very good opportunity to become the person who periscopes about your area of, of your passion. So it's kind of like a breakout opportunity. Um, next up, I'm going to talk, uh, and that, Austin, you can end the scope there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next up, we're going to talk about um, a new area of search marketing. And this has been happening more and more over the past um, year or two. And what's happened is we now ask our phone questions, and we speak in real language. So we use Siri or we use different apps. And so we search. You know, I ask questions like, um, you know, where's the nearest FedEx Kinko's? Because I had to print your things. And we now speak into our phone with real language. Now, if you remember just two or three years ago, when you did a search, you would have to search like FedEx office. And you would get sort of clunky results. And then you'd refine it. FedEx office locations in New York City. And Google was pretty good at figuring it, things out. But now they've gotten really, really good with an update to their search engine algorithm they made um, called the Panda Update and another update called Hummingbird. They've gotten better at, at semantic language. They've built a lot of our real language into the search engine. So they understand like v verbs and nouns, and they understand different words that mean different things. So this is a tremendous opportunity for us from the perspective of search engine marketing. Because now people are searching differently. There's a whole new uh, series of search queries available to be found in the search engines, particularly Google. And so now if you answer questions, it's like a superpower in your superpower. So like Sean does it. I mean, this guy, everybody knows Sean, the founder of Affiliate Summit, Sean and Missy. You, hopefully you'll meet Sean throughout the weekend. But he has a great blog called Affiliate Tip. And it's the affiliate marketing blog. And he asks and answers questions on his blog. What is an affiliate? I mean, this guy's been doing this for like 15 years, but he's still answering the most basic of questions. And the great thing is, if you ask a question as the title of your blog post and answer the question in your blog post, or Sean actually shot a video here, and it has a blog and has information as well, these are new search phrases, relatively new search phrases for Google. Because when we did search engine optimization over the past 10 years, we were just jamming in a bunch of keywords. We weren't writing in real language because the search engines didn't pick up real language. So this is a new evolution and a new opportunity. And the good news is all you have to do is answer the questions that you get asked all the time in your, in your area of your superpower. Now, one of the things that defines your digital marketing superpower is people are always asking you questions about it. Like, you become the go-to person. Like, do you get asked questions about organizing? Because people say, hey, she's really organized. You should get help. Or how about shopping? You were saying all your friends you know, ask you about shopping and help for shopping and things like that. So we're going to do another little quick exercise. Um, and you can work with your partner again. And I want you to write down the three or four questions that you get asked all the time about your digital superpower. And if, you don't, if, you, if this is something you haven't told a lot of people about, write down three or four questions people should be asking you. And these are the most basic questions. I mean, Sean, Sean Collins has answered, what is affiliate marketing? How is affiliate marketing? He wrote a book on affiliate marketing. He has a conference on affiliate marketing. But he's still answering the question, what is an affiliate? So we want to spend about two minutes. OK, you want to spend one minute, and your partner will spend one minute. You want to spend about two minutes writing down questions that you get asked all the time, because these will become your blog posts. OK? So go ahead now and write down some of the questions you get asked all the time. Take two minutes, go. Audio's OK? You can hear good back here. Hmm? Yeah, sure.
one more minute. Oh, you should switch now, partners, if you haven't. Switch partners now if you haven't already. Make sure your partner gets a chance to share their questions with you. Write a couple of them down too, okay guys? You getting some questions down? These are your first Okay, about 30 seconds, we're gonna wrap up. Get one more question. What's your superpower? Um, I'm Jay, by the way. Romaldus, nice Romaldus. what's your name? Alicia, nice to meet you. Um, well, it's very easy for her because food, wine, and uh, psychology. For me, it's food, too. <laughs> 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 looks, like, looks like she's better, yeah. Yeah. When you think of put this down and you think I'm not really this is what you get. I'm not really that good in it. So yeah. Well that's the ninety five percent rule, right? Like you're not writing it for, you know, the guru of the industry who's written seven books and speaks at the conferences. We're going to wrap up now, please, and stop. We're going to come back to these exercises in a minute. Thank you very much. We've got a, a time, time uh, crunch here. So um, can I get a couple of people to share? What, what are some of the questions you get asked all the time? Anyone? We've got one in the back. What, what's your name? Shannon. Shannon. And what's your uh, digital superpower? Writing. Writing? Oh, this is going to be easy for you then. What questions do you get asked all the time, Shannon? Uh, what is the difference between copywriting and content writing? What's the difference between copywriting and content writing? Yeah. What is the difference? No, no. Don't. <laughs> don't. And, and what is, uh, what's another question you get asked all the time? Um, well, one that I want to ask for these people is yeah. this way is why you should have a copywriter on your team as opposed to like a third person. Okay, cool. Are these the kind of questions we sometimes wonder about copy? Yeah, and, and don't try and write the even more sophisticated questions, like write the most basic questions that are going to bring people into your funnel, okay? Th thank you very much for sharing. Quick round for her, please. Just copy my book. Oh, sorry. Okay, one more. Can someone else share their digital superpower? Hi, what's your name? Michelle. Michelle? What's your digital superpower? Uh, writing up deals, what was the first part? Couponing. Couponing. Oh, couponing, that's great in the affiliate business, right? Yeah. And what's some of the questions you get asked all the time about couponing? How do you coupon? How do you coupon? <laughs> that's a basic question, right? What's another good basic question? Where do you get coupons? And the third one was I'm also a mom and blogger, so how do you stay organized with activities? A mommy blogger. So the reason why we're doing this exercise is these simple questions. If you're just starting out, and I talk to someone who's just starting out in financial planning and someone who's just starting out and she's going to blog about quilting. By the way, there's two quilters in the room. You guys got to connect. <laughs> and um, what you're going to do is, is if you're just starting out or even if you already have a blog, we're going to take advantage of this new ability in Google for Google to understand actual sentences and actual questions. And this is a tremendous opportunity for free traffic. And you write the, the title of your blog as a question and you can do blogs, and, and I use blogs because a blog is a simple website. Does everybody know you can set up a WordPress blog in about 15 minutes 
and you can have your own website and be your own webmaster, and, and you can update your blog. It's really, really simple and really inexpensive. So that's why I use the term blogging. And you can, the way Sean added a, a video to his blog, so you can answer the questions in video. You could do periscoping about your topic and be the first person to periscope about couponing. So when I use this example of finding your superpower, finding something you're passionate about, and I was talking to these guys, they're like, well, we're not the world's experts. Again, you don't have to be the world experts. You have 95% of the world who knows less about this topic than you do. People want to know the answers to questions about writing and couponing and financial planning and shopping and cooking, and they're searching with word phrases. And so we're going to add the word phrases to our blog and our videos. We're going to answer the questions, and we're going to get free traffic. Okay? It's pretty simple stuff, but it works great. Thank you very much for sharing. Quick round of applause for Michelle, please. So here's a couple sort of advanced tips, or, or basic tips, actually. Like so many people say, oh, I don't have time to do all this blogging. Has anyone ever heard that? Has anyone ever said that? Um, but you know, we do it. We answer these questions all the time in our area of expertise. And, and uh, by the way, you can apply all of these to your core work. Right? Everything we're talking about works for your personal superpower, but it also works for you as a company because your company has that level of expertise that you know more about whatever it is you do than 99% of the rest of the world. So the company should be answering the basic questions on your blog, on your videos, on your frequently asked questions, on your live periscopes, on your Instagrams, et cetera. So this is an email. We have a, an attorney client here in New York City, and he asked me a question about something he heard at a conference about Google Pay-Per-Click. And I answered his question about how we're, you know, we're doing testing, we've got landing pages, blah, blah, blah. And then a light bulb went off. And I'm a little dim sometimes, but you know, a couple times a week the light bulb goes off. Wow. That's a great blog post. Like Everybody's probably trying to figure this new thing out about Google that they also heard at a conference. And I already wrote the blog post. All I have to do is copy that email, paste it into a Word document, take out anything confidential, take out his name, obviously, and it's a great blog post. As a matter of fact, I've been using exactly the same method all summer with Matt the intern. <laughs> show you how easy this is. We got an intern, a buddy of mine I play tennis with, wanted his son to come and, and work at our company, 17 years old, only a high school intern. And in the first day, I realized he doesn't know any of this stuff about internet marketing. He knows more about how to use Snapchat than I do, and he taught us a lot of things, but he doesn't know the basics about you know, what's a cost per conversion, what's um, a cost per lead, what's affiliate marketing, um, what's digital marketing, what's, how does pay-per-click work. So every day, I would take an extra few minutes after a meeting so that was really neat. The client didn't, you know, wanted to know how to explain cost per lead. So why don't you write that up as a blog post? So Matt, the intern, started doing blog posts. You can find them at 10goldenrules.com and click on the blog link. And so he's written about 15 blogs now answering the basic questions about digital marketing. And when our clients and, and a bunch of people started telling me, oh, I love Matt's blog posts, a, a, another light bulb went off. And I'll tell you what that, that is in a couple minutes, OK? Because there's another great opportunity with all these blog posts. So you answer the questions. You do this work anyways. Even if you answer a question and you, you think it through and you answer the question, the person asks another question, you answer a question, you can make a note to your, you know, mental note to yourself, OK, tonight I can write that up. That's a great blog post. Because everybody wants to know the basic stuff about couponing. Okay? You're going to get asked a dozen times here this weekend. And, and here's another really sophisticated advanced tip. Has anyone ever been to a receptionist like this? <laughs> I got this kind of reception when I tried to get on the floor earlier this morning. They didn't realize this room was open, right? And, and your receptionist or your call center or your intake department is a tremendous source of these questions. So what we do with our clients is we give um, Hilda, the lovely receptionist, a clipboard. And we say, can you just write down all the questions you get every day? And if you get a question twice, put a tick beside it and three times, four times, five times. And then we, at the end of the week, we, we get a bunch of great questions for a company that we can answer. So your sales force, your intake department, your customer service department, and Hilda the receptionist should be the creator of all of your new blog posts and newsletter article ideas and video ideas. Because that's exactly what your prospects are asking into their Siri phones, into their Google searches, and it becomes great search engine marketing fodder. Now, for the super advanced, 
we got one of them in the room. <laughs> there's a, us and for a lot of us, there's a great new book out called Ask. It's written by Lion, Ryan Levesque. And he's come up with a new form of digital marketing where you basically use what he calls a survey funnel. And so you ask a series of seven or eight very basic questions and you identify how sophisticated is your audience. You know, maybe we'll use the financial planning example. So are you new to financial planning? How old are you? How much, you know, how much money have you saved in your retirement plan? Do you have a retirement plan? Do you have stocks? Do you have an invest, you know, do you have an investment advisor? And with those five or six, seven questions, you can get 10 pretty defined streams, and then you're going to take people through streams. So someone who's a, a nouveau person, a young person in their career, they just want to start collecting some money in financial planning, is very different from someone who's in their 50s or 60s and is into very serious retirement planning at that stage. So your, your emails, your landing pages, your offers are going to be very different for all those people. So obviously we're talking about a more sophisticated and advanced type of funnel. We use the term funnel where people come to your website and you funnel them through um, you know, what information do you give them, what offers do you give them. Um, and we use the term funnel, like you funnel your traffic in to a landing page where you give an offer and you give um, you know, shopping carts or signups for emails or downloads or whatever. Okay, So check out the book um, Ask by Ryan Levesque. Next we're going to spend some time on Facebook. I wrote a presentation about four or five years ago called The Death of the 800-Pound Google Rilla. The death of the 800-pound Google Rilla. Do you know the expression, the 800-pound gorilla in an industry? It's like the company that dominates an industry. So Google was the 800-pound gorilla in, in our digital marketing business four or five years ago. And if you weren't doing well on Google pay-per-click or do Google SEO, you know, most people's businesses were faltering because there wasn't another really good option. You know, Yahoo had gone by the wayside and AOL had gone by the wayside. So I saw, we saw Facebook coming up. And we knew that Facebook was going to do phenomenally well from an advertising and marketing standpoint. And the main thing to understand about Facebook, here's Missy Ward, co-founder of Affiliate Summit. Say hey to Missy if, if you see her this weekend. She's awesome. Here's Missy's personal profile. And this is one thing people don't understand. It's the basics of Facebook. As an individual, you have a profile. As a company, you have a fan page. A business fan page. So here's Affiliate Summit's business fan page. Now about 24, 36 months ago, um, Facebook allowed us to create business pages in addition to our personal profiles. So 24, 36 months ago, we started clicking the like button on things like Affiliate Summit. And so what were we telling Facebook? What knowledge and information were we giving Facebook? When we click the like button on Affiliate Summit, what are we telling them? We like what? We're interested in affiliate marketing. So now, Facebook, three years later, with all the likes and all the clicks and all the likes we've clicked on, on things in news streams and all the things we've uploaded and all the things we've commented on, Facebook has a 1,000 points of data on each of us. So now when we do Facebook advertising campaigns, we can be incredibly precise with our advertising and marketing. So here's an example of an ad that came up in my stream. And you'll see this up here. It just says sponsored. And this is something about a profitable marketing system. What ads do we have over here? A six-figure formula for video marketing. And this is for a CRM, a customer response management system. Now, do you think um, like an 18-year-old kid in college would see these ads? Would Matt the intern see these ads? No way. These are targeted to Jay Berkowitz because they're all about sophisticated types of marketing. Because I've clicked on things like Affiliate Summit and Ryan Levesque and a bunch of marketing things and a bunch of marketing people. So they can target me very, very precisely. And this is the number one most advanced success strategy today in our business for our clients. It's called Facebook Custom Audience. And the way it works is so now Facebook has all this information. They have 1,000 points of data on each of us, right? So you can upload your email database into Facebook. You upload your email database. So let's say we, you know, we were doing this, this marketing for a couple years, and we already had you know, 5,000, 10,000 people on our email list. We upload the database into Facebook. Then Facebook is going to do a match. And they're going to match about 50% of the emails. So if I use my Jay Berkowitz, you know, Jay at 10goldenrules.com, my business email address for Facebook, and I also use it to sign up for your newsletter list, they're going to get a, a match, right? And if I, like, say I use my Gmail on one and not the other, then they're not going to get a match. 
So they're going to match about 50%. Then they're going to go and create what's called the lookalike audience. So let's say our mailing list is 1,000 people. They get 500 matches. They're going to look at those 500 people and the 1,000 points of data they have on those people. And then they're going to say, OK, here's 10,000 people who look exactly like the first 500. What are the, why do they look like them? Because they clicked on things like Affiliate Summit and CRM and Ryan Levesque and Sean Collins and Missy Ward. So they know, like Jay Berkowitz is into internet marketing. So now our Facebook marketing is incredibly targeted. And when you use this, this whole, there's a whole suite, by the way, in custom audience. But this is sort of the killer application, this, this mirror audience. It works phenomenally well. So it's a little bit sophisticated. And again, this is more of the advanced tip. But does every, everybody understand the capability of Facebook now with 1,000 points of data on all of us? OK, cool. Um, and one other little tip on Facebook. This is my buddy JB Glossinger. He's got an awesome podcast called Morning Coach. And every morning, he starts with 15 minutes of positive energy to get you fired up for your day. Uh, morningcoach.com, but it's a, an a iTunes podcast. And his Facebook community, he uses what we call Facebook candy or Facebook memes. You've been seeing these for a few years, but they work phenomenally well. And here's a little quote. Any food, any food can know the point is to under, oh, sorry, any fool can know. <laughs> any fool can know the point is to understand Albert Einstein. Now this little post got 477 likes, 148 shares. He has 141,000 likes on his Facebook business fan page. Now why is it so powerful that he got 477 likes and 148 shares? Jen, you take this one. Why is it so awesome when you get 148 people to like your Facebook post? Yeah, and all their friends, like if I click the like button on JB's thing, all of my friends are going to see that I liked it. I did a post about this presentation this morning. Sean Collins liked it. Anyone see that? Right? Or you probably will over, over the day, right? So it's very, very powerful because he, you know, all of his friends are going to see what he likes. So your stuff spreads virally. So these little Facebook candies or Facebook memes are kind of like the little secret superpower today in Facebook for your, your regular organic Facebook content. And this matching is, is amazing. So the Facebook is working really, really well. I mentioned in my presentation the death of the 800-pound Google Gorilla. Well, it's true now. So for a lot of our clients, we can split the budget 50-50, Facebook and Google. We're no longer 100% reliant on Google. And here's a campaign we ran. The magazine ad got 1,200 visits to the magazine website. We created a specific landing page for each, each media. It got 30 conversions, 30 leads. This was for, um, I think, a swim school, uh, children's swimming school, just a small business. Um, the conversion rate was 2.3% and the cost per conversion. So the amount of money we spent on the magazine ads, or the, the, actually this was done by the ad agency, traditional ad agency, the cost for a lead was $187, okay? On Google, when people search for swimming school, we got 3,000 visitors, so twice as many, 143 conversions, so what's that, like five times as many. The conversion rate was 4.5%, so 4.5% of the people who saw the page became a lead. The cost per lead was $31. Is that great? And Facebook did even better. We got 7,400 people to the web page, 400 conversions, 5% conversion rate, and only $20 a lead. So Facebook, you got, if you haven't checked it out, you've got to check it out. And then you've got to get into some of these more sophisticated things in custom audience. OK, next up, we're going to talk about how do you take all this work and make it work? And I mentioned earlier that I came up with a bright idea. This happens about once or twice a year, so pay attention. And, and I, I was doing all this work with Matt, the intern, and he's writing these blog posts. And people were liking the blog posts. And it was explaining things in basic, simple language that a 17-year-old could understand. And the light bulb went off. This would be a great ebook. And so we're, I'm working together with Matt, and we're creating Matt the Intern's Guide to Digital Marketing. And it'll come out at the end of the summer with 30 or 40 blog posts. Now, it might not go anywhere. It might not do a lot for, for me. I'm going to be the sort of co-author or the helpful author, whatever you call it, the editor. But for Matt, it's going to be awesome for applying to college. So <laughs> he's, he's the big winner, right? But it's been great. People love our stuff. And we use this strategy all the time. This is a client of ours that um, buys five-star hotel furniture, fixes it up, and sells it to three- and four-star hotels. 
so they can upgrade the quality of the rooms. And he wrote a, a guide called 29 Ways to Increase Your Room Rates by 200%. And it becomes a very simple um, offer or something we call in the 10 Golden Rules a UVP, a unique value proposition. Something free that we want people to engage with when they come to our blog or our website. Now here's a little magic. You guys all have three or four questions, but you're going to you know, do a little bit more work and you're going to write the top 10 questions you get asked all the time in your digital superpower. And what you do is you write those up in a blog post and then they become your ebook. And now you've got an offer on your website to start building your mailing list. And I'll tell you that marketer after marketer after marketer today in digital marketing still makes the majority of their money from their email list. Do not believe the rumors that email is dead. Whenever we mail out a newsletter for ourselves or for any of our clients, we do phenomenally well. Your best list is your house list, the people who've already opted in to get your 29 ways to increase your room rates. This is for an interior designer we work with. This is the 2015 Interior Design Style Guide. I mean, people love this. They download it, they join our mailing list, and now we have that first digital handshake relationship with them. And you guys just got the tool. Um, here's my buddy JB has the secrets to waking up pumped free ebook. And so you guys now have the first offer, the UVP, the unique value proposition, something that can, they can download on your website. So we're going to do one more exercise. I'd like you to find a new partner this time, OK? So if you, you guys work together, I want you two to work together and you two to work together, OK? So everyone quickly find a new partner, OK? New partner, new partners. It's only going to be a two-minute exercise. It's not a lifetime commitment. OK, everyone ready? Does anyone not have a partner? You don't have a partner? Can you guys connect? It's going to be two minutes, OK, guys? OK, here's what I want you to do. You you found your digital superpower. Explain it quickly to your new partner, and you wrote your questions. Explain your quest one question really quickly, and I, what I want you to do is brainstorm with your partner and write the title of your ebook. Okay, you're going to write the title of your ebook, like JB has secrets to waking up pumped free ebook, or download your 215 style guide, or 29 ways to increase your room rates. Write the title of your ebook. Spend one minute on you. One minute with your partner, go!
doing my affiliate summit presentation. And right now everybody's working on the cover of their ebook, the title of their ebook. And um, everybody's developing their own ebook title. So um, right now we're going to switch over. Everybody's uh, working with a partner. Everyone, you're going to switch now, okay? So partner A, partner B, you're going to switch now. Work with your partner on the title of his or her ebook. So we're live at Affiliate Summit in New York. It's awesome. We're having a great time. Hey, D Commando, great to see you. I guess that's not too exciting. I'll go through a few of the slides. Um, we talked to people about uh, Facebook, custom audiences. That was really cool. Um, we talked about, um, oh, this is awesome. It's a new book by Ryan Levesque called Ask, and about creating custom digital marketing formulas. Hey, who's uh, Heal87? <laughs> Good to see you. What's your name? Do we know each other? Or is this someone who's in the conference? Um, we talked about Periscope, of course, and Amanda Oleander. Hey, Amanda. Thanks for tweeting us yesterday. Shane James, great to see you. Okay, about 20 seconds. 20 seconds, we're going to wrap up. Okay, i got to go back on stage, but we're going to... Uh, I'll, I'll, keep tweet, I'll keep scoping for a little while. Yeah, you can just scope for me. Right? Okay, stop. Pretty good, and stop. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so hopefully we've got some really cool titles now for eBooks. Someone else, someone who hasn't shared with us. What's your superpower and what's, uh, what's some of the questions you get asked all the time? What's your name, first of all? Carrie. Hey, Carrie, thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Uh, so we have questions about So questions about saving money, yeah. saving money on home care. Yeah, I need to know, like, this summer, how can I save money with our budget? So, um, Doing stuff with your kids on a budget. I'm just repeating for the recording. So say it again, please. The title of your ebook is How Busy Moms, How busy moms Who Hate Crafts Can Save Money This Christmas. Save money this Christmas. Is that, that's pretty good, right? Yeah. Round of applause. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. And do you have a blog already? Yeah. Okay, great. So now you can just answer people's questions, write them up as blog posts, and think of those as each one of those is a page or a chap, you know, a little mini chapter in your book. Uh, someone else like to share? Right here. What's your name? Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. Thanks for sharing. Um, as an affiliate marketer, I like to think of myself as a blogger. So you're an affiliate marketer. Okay. So for my ebook, I wanted 10 ways to screw up as a new blogger. 10 ways to screw up as a new blogger. Do we want to download that one? <laughs> That's pretty good, right? And, and the other thing you want to write is some of the bullet points. Like on some of these, we write bullet points. So you see JB, wake, secrets to waking up pumped. Why you often wake up feeling miserable. Secret society doesn't want you to know. Secret society doesn't want you to know. How to wake up pumped with vibrant energy, ready to take on the day, right? So you want to write some really fired up bullet posts that'll explain a little bit more about what's in the ebook, especially when you're going to capture an email address in exchange for the free ebook, all right? So that's great. Thank you very much for sharing. Quick round of applause, please. We've got one more up here. Who do we got in the front? What's your name, please? Heather. Heather? Yeah. And what's your secret society digital superpower? Um, I'm, well, I'm an internet marketer for the trading industry. Internet marketer for the trading industry? Trading. Stock trading, New York kind of thing? OK, great. Uh, and, and what are some of the questions that people ask you all the time? How to get started, how not to lose money. How to get started, how not to lose money. And the title of your ebook is going to be? 10 Common Mistakes New Traders Make. 10 Common Mistakes New Traders Make. Right? Easy as pie. And what would be a couple bullet points? What are some of the things they're going to find in there? Uh, how to remove emotions from trading. How to remove emotions from trading. How to increase your risk. Yeah, and all you have to do is put the title of a couple of those questions, the first questions that you wrote. Because the, the simple way to get started with this, and you know, guys, the reason why we do this is that it's all about getting started. You know, you can write 10 ebooks, 
right? Like I just came up with an ebook this summer with Matt, the intern, because I was explaining to him all these things about digital marketing. So the important thing though is getting started and then having something on your website that people can engage with and do that first digital handshake. My friend Jeff Walker has a great term. He calls it an irresistible bribe. You know, what content is so, you know, if you answer the 10 questions that everyone getting started trading or who's disorganized or, you know, starting out in their financial savings and financial investing career, like, if you answer those questions and, and they see on your ebook and your bullets, well, this is exactly what I need. They're going to do that little bit of trust, that irresistible bribe. You're bribing them to give you their email address. It's not a big, you know, it's not, it's not a big thing that you need. You just need their email address. And they have to trust you enough to give you just their email address and their name. And then you're going to email them the ebook. And so it's irresistible and it's a bribe. And that's how it works very, very powerfully. Okay? Everyone's got that one. And here's um, kind of what I call the sort of easy tip. There's an amazing website for all of this stuff. It's called Fiverr. How many people have heard of Fiverr? Who hasn't heard of Fiverr? Well, now we all have. But what Fiverr is, is for $5, people will do things like create, like this ebook cover was created on Fiverr. And this ebook cover was created on Fiverr. So for $5, you can get an artist to create an ebook cover. For $5, you could get people to write up your, your blog post answers. For $5, you could get people to create a blog and make it graphically beautiful. And you know, sometimes they'll charge $20 if you want to get it in 48 hours, or they'll charge additional money to you know, upload your WordPress blog to your own domain name, which I recommend. So Fiverr is a tremendous resource to do all this stuff, and there's absolutely no excuse for any size company not to be using resources like Fiverr. I also like guru.com and elance.com. OK, next up I'm going to talk about something I call unbouncing. Um, and basically, this is an amazing new website called Unbounce. And there's another site called uh, leadpages.net, where you can build little uh, quick landing pages, beautiful landing pages. And then you can do a lot of testing on those pages. So what this software allows you to do is create these pages, upload them to your website. And then you can drive traffic through paid advertising, Google ads, Facebook ads to these pages. And that's where we do a lot of the testing that I talked about earlier. So it's very, very easy to put this together. So we call this A-B testing. So I was talking earlier to the photographer, and you were, you were worrying, like, should I put the title of my ebook as like how not to not take bad photos or how to take good photos? And I said the easy thing you could do is test it. For $5, you get each cover made of your ebook. It's the same questions, the same answers. You get two different covers made on your ebook. And then you create two different landing pages. How to take great photos. How not to take bad photos. And you send you know, $100 worth of traffic to the one page and $100 worth of traffic to the other page. And then the beauty of this Unbound software or Lead Pages software is they do all the calculations for you. So in this case, option A got 50% uh, of the, the traffic. They got 515 visitors. And the conversion rate. 59% of the people who came to that page downloaded the software. Option B, 44% downloaded the software. Which way are we going to go? Option A, right? And then what you do is you come up with option C. And you test a new design and a new, off, you know, new bullets, and maybe a different color ebook. And you test option A versus option C. And if C wins, then you test D versus C. So it's very, very easy to do in this software called Unbounce and Lead Pages. Um, mobile is really, really powerful. So Unbounce will take your website and make it mobily responsive. Uh, mobile is so important because 50% of searches are now being done on mobile phones. An average person checks their phone 150 times a day. And what we're finding now is that a form, like we showed you on the Unbounce pages, converts at about 2%. So about 2% of people who come to your website fill out your form. But on mobile, if, people, if you can get them to call you, 29% convert. So you've got to make sure your Google Ads include the mobile call extension where people can click and call you, and it converts very powerfully in the call center. The other thing you should be testing is chat. Now, this is something that's been around for a little while, but it didn't seem to work four or five years ago. I don't know if consumers were afraid of it or the technology wasn't as good, 
but there's a number of chat companies who will manage your chat for you, and you can chat. And this is an example of one of our clients. He got 86 forms completed on his site, 46 of a different form, and he had 303 chats in one month. So about 60% of his leads came through his chat function. They're giving me the wrap-up sign, so I'm going to wrap up with one very powerful concept. This is something I call cascading content. And basically it takes everything we've done and it makes it really, really easy to execute in all of your social media. Now I use the term cascade because it's like a waterfall. Cascades down and bounces off rocks and creates little streams. Does everyone understand what I mean by that? So we start with an article, okay? Now your article is the same as the blog post we talked about earlier. And basically you just answer a question that somebody asked you and you, you write it as a blog post and maybe include a little video and explain it and the video goes on your YouTube channel. And then you're going to take those four articles a month. If you just do one a week, four a month, you can email them out. I use the chimp to represent MailChimp, okay? But you can use Constant Contact or any Aweber's fantastic, any email service. You're going to email once a month a newsletter out to everybody who opted in for your ebook and on your email list. So you stay top of mind, right? Like you're the expert on organizing. You're the expert on photography, financial planning. And once a month when you send them four free articles, they're going to be like, you know what? I never did download that ebook. I want to get the ebook. And now they, be, they start engaging with you a little bit more at a higher level. You can take those articles and turn them into a blog post. So an article would typically be five, 600 words. A blog post would be 100, 150 words. And then you can take that same concept, um, you know, how not to take bad photographs, or how to take great photographs in Times Square. That, art, that would be a 500-word article, a 100-word blog post, and it would be a short Facebook post that would link back to the article. Also, you're going to tweet it, Google Plus it. Um, you're going to pick the, you know, periscope it and everything else. And as I mentioned, you could start with a video, and you could drop into your content, or you could start with an audio podcast, transcribe it, turn it into an article, and blog about it and Facebook about it. So this sounds complex, but the beauty of this is Matt, the intern, can execute this for you. So all you need is this, your, your expertise, your experience. You answer a question. You make a few notes on it. You hire someone for five bucks on Fiverr to write it up as a 500-word article. You proof it, approve it. It goes on your website as, as an article, as content for SEO. And then, again, the intern or the person on Fiverr for five bucks can take your 500-word article and turn it into a blog post and a Facebook update and update your social media. So it's a really easy way to take all the content and the expertise we've talked about and get it out there. Everyone got it? Pretty cool? OK. Last thing, if you'd like to sign up for my email newsletter list and get all these kinds of tips and Matt the Interns um, articles and stuff like that, just give me a business card at the end. And if you have a business, and you're interested in how we could help you with your business, how we could do stuff like I showed you for the, the furniture retailer and the swim school and the, and the lawyer, just write FU on the back of your business card, OK? That means follow up. And then I'll follow up with you. So just write FU on the back of your business card, and we'll either connect here at the show or um, you'll let me know how I can help you. Betty, what do we got? A time for about two questions? One question? Who gets a golden question? Any questions? One question right here, sir. I just thought I'll win the question and then I'll figure out the question. So thank you very much. Uh, now, this all sounds. Just so you know what he said, he said he's going to win the question and then he's going to figure out the question. <laughs> but you already got a book. What are you going to win? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, okay. Now, do you think. Uh, sorry, I got a title for a book. He's got a title for a book. Yeah, I can give you the title as well. Um, the, the, the title for the book is to, sorry, I lost it somewhere. Tell you what, let's wrap it up. Okay. I'll, be, I'll be here for questions. Write FU on the back of your card if you'd like me to follow up with you and help you with any of these things, or if 10 Golden Rules can help your business. Thank you all very much.